So it's been around about a year since ChatGPT first exploded into society's consciousness. And of course, interest in AI and chatbots has not waned since then. ChatGPT now offers a premium version, which is around about 20 US dollars a month, plus various tax depending on your location. And this version gives you access to its latest and greatest language model, which is currently GPT-4. It's also supposedly faster and gives you access as a premium user when the server is busy. And crucially, it allows one, access to real-time information through the internet, which the free version does not do. And two, access to its plugins, which is kind of like an app store. And we're going to be looking at both of those features in this video. My name's Joe Club. I'm a sports science consultant and founder of Global Performance Insights, a sports science consultancy company. And so I'm going to be talking about examples from sports science, but of course, these tools and features are of interest to everyone who might use ChatGPT. Okay, so here you can see the ChatGPT interface. It's literally just changed in the last couple of days. This drop down menu in the premium version that allows you to change between the GPT 3.5 model from the free version or the more advanced GPT 4 models. Previously, this option was middle central up here and also allowed you to toggle on some other settings. And in particular, the um, browsing setting, which we're going to talk about in, when ChatGPT uses Bing, Microsoft Bing, to access live information. This previously was initially a beta version and then something you had to toggle on, but now is inbuilt. So I did a previous video where I talked about using ChatGPT for sports science research, and that was with the free version. And we asked it a number of questions in terms of training load as an example. So I'm going to start with the same, and I'm just going to ask, chat GPT-4, can you define internal and external training load and discuss the differences between them? So we're seeing that it is concepts used in sports science. Uh, internal training load represents physiological and psychological stress. It's subjective and measured using heart rate, rate of RPE. Now it's saying here that it's subjective and I don't really agree with that. As it then goes on to say, um, we've got heart rate and we've got RPE. And heart rate for me is an objective measure of internal load. So as always with these chatbots, we need to validate the information. In fact, down the bottom here, it even says chat GPT can make mistakes. Consider checking important information. So we, that's where our knowledge comes in to verify what it's saying. Now, one of the key points in the last year with trying to integrate and use chat GPT has been the point that the system was making up references. It was very limited in terms of giving you scientific references because it is a language model. And so it's kind of predicting what words should go together. So it was extremely limited. In fact, I avoided it altogether in terms of bringing up references. But what we see now, because it has access in the premium version to the internet, perhaps it can do this better. So I'm going to ask if it can provide scientific references for this information. And immediately here you see a difference. So it's told you now that it's browsing with Bing. It was not doing that before. This first response is based on its language model. Whereas here it showed us that it's searching on Bing. It's searching PubMed to give us some references from the internet. Of course, as always with ChatGPT, the more specific you are, the better, the more relevant your answer is going to be. I've been quite broad here. I haven't said specifically to what, I haven't said how many references, I haven't given it uh, years. And so I quite like the fact it's actually, rather than based on its previous answer, okay, it's giving me some text now about internal and external training loads. And it is supposedly backing it up with these references, but let's take a closer look. So you see these hyperlinks now in with the speech marks. And with this version, then we are getting access to the web. So here it is taken us to this publication, the relationship between internal and external loads as a tool to monitor fitness status of teams for athletes. A theoretical framework was produced in 2003 to define and conceptualize the measurable constructs of the training process. I'm guessing this is Franco's paper, internal and external training lines 15 years on. And actually we can see there the information that it is pulled out around this theoretical framework. So already there is a big improvement. It is able to back up its information 
using these references and linking to real papers of the internet. I also want to point out that I'm noticing some differences in how it responds. These chatbots rarely respond exactly the same every time because of the different models and the information it's getting. So I've asked this exact same two questions before in a different chat. And you can see here, if I flip to that, that in this case, again, it's given me Franco and Pelizzeri's uh, 15 years on paper, um, but it, that was the only one it gave me. Um, so it's interesting here now that it's given me a whole new um, text that it's then built in the references. Let's see if we can get it to add in the references. So can you repeat the response above, but include in-text citations and a reference list at the bottom, including the links to the paper? Firstly, I'm seeing already slight differences in their response. That first citation we saw that we looked at was this paper, Lima Alves et al. Uh, from 2022, whereas we're now getting uh, a reference for Bordon. And also, we know that this theoretical framework introduced in 2003 is from the Impelizzeri paper, but it is giving us a in-text citation here of Carl Foster's paper from 2001. So... Let's see then what happens. We, as, as I said, the reference was slightly different when we click on this link to the paper. Okay, we go to an empty PubMed page. And how about this Foster link? Okay, so mixed responses there. My prompt could be improved. I could give it more information about exactly what I'm looking for. My takeaway from this is that the premium version does give you access to, to, to the internet and therefore to papers. But as always, it's really important that we check the information that it's giving us. We check the citations, references, and the detail. Is this currently more useful than just either PubMed or Google Search, Google Scholar? Probably that remains to be seen. But we have some other potential benefits as well as we're going to show. So then I asked for, again, five highly cited articles and provide the reference in APA style and a link to the paper. So a bit more detail in this prompt. And I do get, for some reason here, it encounters technical issues. So it only returned three papers. We've got Shona Housen's paper. And again, the referencing style looks correct to me from the APA style. And with the link, we've got this Hordon consensus statement again. And finally, Eckard from 2018, systematic review. So then in my next query, I wanted to ask it whether it could read um, a PDF using uh, a URL. So can it access that? And here it's returned an error. It seems that there's a technical limitation that prevents me from accessing PDF files directly. Uh, and that brings me on to the next key feature in ChatGPT Premium, which are access to the plugins. So as I mentioned, we can add plugins to the premium version. We go down here into our settings and we see our beta features. And so we have to now enable plugins. And some of the other features, like I mentioned, the Bing browsing feature was previously a beta feature that we had to enable, but is now just part of the default service and we can enable that. Interesting here to see advanced data analysis. It strikes me that that will probably be a topic of a future video. We're not gonna look at that today, but of course that is potentially of real interest and benefits for scientists. So we have now enabled our plugins. So now I've created a new chat and this time when we go down to this drop down, we can see our plugins options. And this is all new to me. I'm going through it at the same time with you and installing some of the plugins that I've seen used that I think will be of most benefit to researchers and or sports science practitioners. So a few notes here that plugins are powered by third-party applications. Therefore, if something goes wrong or they're not quite what you hope for, don't blame OpenAI. Of course, some data and privacy notifications here because to use the plugins, it's going to send some information to them. And as we will see, ChatGPT automatically chooses when to use plugins. Like we saw earlier, where it then knew from the prompt it would be best or it thought it would be best to use Bing. So it automatically did that. The same thing happens with these plugins. So as you can see here, a bit of an app store, plugin store. We've got a number of different options available to us. The first one we're going to start with is chat with PDF. 
even though ChatGPT has access to the internet, it cannot yet read PDFs just through the browser. So let's try this chat with PDF plugin. So I have downloaded chat with PDF plugin and we have to uh, enable it at the start of our chat to make use of it. So I've got it enabled here. Okay, so let's see if it can, first of all, read a PDF that is open access on the internet. And uh, I'm asking it to read um, the, a recent basis position statement all about using AI. Uh, and let's see if using this URL, it can ingest, if it can ingest this article. Now, straight away then, you see that it knows it's going to automatically use chat with PDF to fulfill this request. So it's told us that it's it's read it. So now we can ask some questions of chat GPT based on that PDF. So just for your information, viewer, this is the PDF, as I mentioned, open access at the URL um, that it has now ingested. And you can see in the position statement from BASIS, the British Association of Sport and Exercise Science, that um, it has a number of plows all about AI and along within it, it has a number of positions in red. I think there are 13 in total. So I'm going to see whether it can extract those key positions along with their numbers. Okay, well, starting with the position number two is never an ideal sign. So it's found six of the points, two, five, six, seven, ten, eleven. I know this is correct for number two. Let's have a look at five, six, and seven, shall we? Great care with detection, investment decisions, and various assessments. So five, six, and seven. Uh, great care with detected AI, investment decisions, and number seven. Oh, okay, interesting. So with number seven, it's actually almost expanded on them. And um, BASIS adopts the following definitions, and this has listed those terms from the table, but, but not replicated that pure position statement. So a bit hit and miss, really, um, because of the specific nature of the information we were requesting. Let's ask perhaps for something more simple, more uh, a strength of chat GPT. So now asking for a summary of it. And of course, again, I deliberately been very open-ended here. I've given it no guidance as to how I want the, the, the summary presented, how long it should be. Interesting here that it's picking out key points. And it's quite a long summary, but again, I didn't exactly prompt it how long it should or shouldn't be. So let's have a quick look at this summary. Comprehensive overview of the potential challenges, ethical considerations surrounding the integration of AI and key points include detection, investment, development, curriculum assessment. We saw that ethical and responsible use, future research, educational focus, assessment definitions, we saw that was kind of earlier in the PDF. I would question whether that comes after future research and development. And I know as well from that PDF that the basis um, values are listed much higher in that. So for me, again, it's reinforcing that it can extract this with this plugin information from a PDF, but we have to be, we have to, again, as always, check the information that it's providing. So that's a PDF that was open access. What I want to do now is show you a way that we can utilize this plugin if um, there isn't public web access, but perhaps we do have a copy. So this is a recent publication from myself and Sean Allen and Kate Young talking about using KPIs and, and how we should maybe look at some process driven approaches. So I'm going to ask whether it has access to the PDF at that URL. And as suspected, because obviously it's behind a paywall, um, although you can request that paper from me on ResearchGate if that's of interest. But what I've done is I've uploaded the PDF to my Google Drive. So now I've set that to anyone with the link can access that. And I copied it in here. And let's see now. There you can see I clearly didn't have the settings actually set up right. So you can learn from my mistakes that to use the PDF from a Google Drive link, it needs anyone with the link to be able to view. 
I've uploaded that and it's automatically gone with chat with PDF and now it's read it. So I'm going to ask it to provide a summary. Okay, so here then is our summary on that paper. And as uh, an author on it, I should know whether this is a valid summary or not. So the paper entitled Selection of Key Performance Indicators, myself, Sean and Kate, discusses the use of KPIs. We list four key issues related to using KPIs. And then we introduce OPTs, ongoing process trackers, as quantifiable measures of behaviors and processes emphasizes the importance of focusing on the processes that underpin performance success. In summary, it provides a new framework for performance indicators in sport. So yeah, I would say that that is a pretty good summary of that paper. So we previously talked to that as well about using different tone of voice, different audiences, thinking about your audience and integrating that into your prompt. So asking now whether you can su summarize the paper for a 12 year old and I think that's a really nice summary for for a younger brain of our paper. But there's lots of other things we can do here now. The things that we could do in the free version, but the important thing with this plugin is that it can read our PDFs, which gives us a whole host of avenues for our research. But let's take a look at the plugin store again and tons that we could go into. I'm sure we'll need to do some more videos but I just want to look at right now Scholar AI because boy, does that sound of interest to us. So let's install this one next. So we installed Scholar AI. I'm on the GPT-4 version and let's go to our plugin. Remember, you need to enable them at the start of your chat. And I believe you can have up to three enabled. So let's just enable both of these. So remember when we were using the Bing search earlier and I showed you the example where I asked for five highly cited articles on athlete training load. Let's now put this in and see which app it goes to. Okay, so as I suspected, it does go straight to Scholar AI. We are not now using Bing. We are using this plugin. Remember, it gave us three articles before. It couldn't, for some reason, give us five. And interestingly, I think these first couple are exactly the same. Shona Hauser's paper and the, the consensus statement as well. Obviously, we're going to check the citations and the links. Okay, so you see we've got these previews here. We've got these links. Interesting that it only was able to give us four and not the five we specified, but let's have a look. So Shona's paper, this link takes us to Springer link. And it's open access, so it gives us the full PDF. Okay, so I've checked all those links now and they do go to the correct papers. But even an uh, extra bonus here that with these open access papers, it is providing us with a link that takes us to the PDF text. But we see that this paper is not open access, so there's no PDF link available. So, of course, just touching the surface there, just asking for a few references. I want to see actually what happens if we ask for the abstracts as well. I'm going to mix it up a bit this time and ask about sleep and athletic performance rather than training mode. And let's see what it comes back with. Now, as a note, you can see actually that drop down arrow for the uh, plugin will actually show you the code that is using if you open that up. Particularly um, if you come across an error, perhaps you can go into this and see why it hit an error there. Okay, so it's still working, but let's have a look at the first couple. It's returned sleep and athletic performance, an update, the author's abstract, but let's have a look and let's check the DOI link. Okay, so sleep and athletic performance. That link seems correct. Okay, the impact of sleep, a systematic review, 2022, open access. And so therefore we have access to PDF. And 
would you like to save any of these papers to your Zotero reference manager? Now, that may be a really useful tool uh, or feature for sports scientists. I've got another video with a demonstration of using Zotero. It's an, a free online tool I only found in the last couple of years, and I really wish I'd had it for the rest of my career, and particularly at university. Really simple automated citation manager and the fact that perhaps now chat gpt can access these pdfs and it can also link in with your zotero and keep everything together will be a really efficient way to set up your publication database thanks for watching i hope you found this video useful if you haven't already please hit subscribe and like this video and comment below on how you're using chat gpt what are the best plugins or prompts that you found to really accelerate your use of this platform? Or if you're completely new to ChatGPT, you just want to try out the free version and take a look at this other video in which I talked through that version.